Well, it's looking like the end of an era for Green Bay. But how did it come to this? Well, let's take a look. I'm sorry. Don't cry. No, this is your fault. The NFL world has once again been reminded that no player is untouchable. It's the seven words no Packers fan ever wanted to hear. Aaron Rodgers wants out of Green Bay. The report came in a bombshell report from ESPN's Adam Schefter just hours before the start of the 2021 draft. Uh, according to Schefter, the three-time MVP has become disgruntled to the point where he has told some within the organization that he does not want to return to the team. Yeah, yeah, GM Brian Gutekunst has stated several times that they don't plan on trading Rodgers, but if the future Hall of Famer keeps this stance, the Packers front office really won't have a choice. The fact that Rodgers is referring to Gutekunst as Jerry Krause in group chats, according to a report from Bob McQuinn of The Athletic, well, that doesn't bode well for the pack. Chicago Bulls fans and viewers of the Last Dance documentary will understand the Kraus reference. He was the man who built the Bulls 90s dynasty that won six championships. He was also the man who broke it up after their final run in 1998. Kraus was hated by franchise player Michael Jordan. And, well, it sounds like the exact same thing is happening between Rodgers and Gutekunst. Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk reported that Rodgers doesn't like anyone in Green Bay's front office. Charles Robinson of Yahoo Sports later reported that Rodgers wouldn't return to Green Bay if Gutekunst remained the GM. The long and short of it, the relationship is beyond repair and there is nothing that can be done. So, how did we get there? It didn't all happen in the heat of the moment. When you go all the way back to 2018 and start to look at certain events, one thing becomes very clear. Rodgers' divorce from the Packers was always inevitable. Most Packers fans have heard the reports of friction between Rodgers and former head coach Mike McCarthy, who was later fired in the 2018 season. One of the final straws, it seems, was when the Packers decided not to retain quarterbacks coach Alex Van Pelt following a disappointing 2017 season. Rodgers made it very clear that he was not happy during an appearance on ESPN Radio's Golic and Wingo. You mentioned some of those changes that, that you thought were a little curious. What were some of those changes you thought were a little curious? Well, my quarterback coach. Yeah didn't get retained yeah uh, you know I, I thought that was uh, <clears throat> an interesting change uh, really without consulting me um, there's a close uh, connection between quarterback and quarterback coach um, and uh, that was an interesting decision McCarthy claimed that Van Pelt had made the decision to leave on his own but Rogers comments suggest otherwise so hey take it however you want Anyway, so the Packers had another disappointing year in 2018 as McCarthy ran an offense that grew far too stale. He failed to change things up, and Rodgers just didn't look like an MVP quarterback anymore. Green Bay finished 6-9-1 on the year and fired their head coach as a result. When the Packers hired then-Tennessee Titans offensive coordinator Matt LaFleur to fill the head coaching vacancy, it just felt perfect for Rodgers and the offense. There is a younger and fresher voice now in town, and Rodgers no longer had to set aside the differences he had with McCarthy. Rodgers played more like a game manager in 2019, but the Packers won 13 games and reached the NFC Championship game. All things considered, it was a highly successful first year for the rodgers lafleur partnership. Now, that said, it was pretty clear that Green Bay needed some upgrades on offense. After staying quiet in free agency, it felt like Green Bay would definitely address the position at the draft. Instead, they made a baffling move that only fractured the relationship with Rodgers even further. Green Bay moved up from the 30th spot to 26 in a trade with the Miami Dolphins. Then, they used the selection on Utah State quarterback Jordan Love, who was widely expected to be a second or third round draft pick. First of all, it was a giant reach. Secondly, why did the Packers take a quarterback when they had Rodgers under contract through 2023? This guy wasn't anywhere close to retiring or losing his starting job. And thirdly, how did you pass on all of those promising wide receiver prospects? Just look at what guys like Michael Pittman Jr., T. Higgins, and Chase Claypool did for their respective teams as rookies. Now, Rodgers tried to be as professional as possible, but admitted that he wasn't all that happy when the Packers took love. 
So, how did he respond? Well, all Rogers did was win his third MVP award by completing 70.7 .7 pass attempts for 4,299 yards and 48 touchdowns against only five interceptions. Statistically speaking, it was the best year of his career. Green Bay went 13-3 for the second straight year to claim the top seed and lone first round bye in the NFC. But the playoff misery didn't change. Rodgers was sacked five times in the NFC Championship game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Packers secondary was torched by Tom Brady, who continuously punished them with the deep ball passes. That included a 39-yard touchdown to Scotty Miller at the end of the first half when he somehow got behind the Green Bay secondary. Prevent defense, anyone? Rodgers did all he could to try and rally the Packers back from their 18-point deficit, but he faced constant pressure while his counterpart, Tom Brady, got to sit in the pocket it all day and make easy throws to his stacked set of receivers. With the pack trailing by eight before the two-minute warning, Lafleur curiously called for a field goal, rather than ask the MVP to take a shot at the end zone on a fourth and goal play. Instead of going for it here on fourth and goal, Crosby makes this a five-point game again. By taking the three points, Lafleur was putting the game in his defense's hands, rather than in Rodgers. And that decision was costly, as the Bucks easily melted the clock and won the NFC Championship on A-Rod's home turf. Which brings us back to the 2020 draft. Now imagine if the Packers used that first round selection on a receiver or another impact player who could start right away, rather than use it on a quarterback who wasn't really needed for the next few years. For Rodgers, it had to be frustrating to see how his team was built compared to Tampa's. After Brady arrived, the Bucks wasted no time bringing in more personnel and big-time playmakers to maximize the talents of their new quarterback. Not to mention that head coach Bruce Arians and offensive coordinator Brian Leftwich gave Brady a ton of freedom in the offense. And look what happened. In one year, the Bucks did more to build around Brady than the Packers did for Rodgers in, say, the past three years. And this is a franchise legend we're talking about. While we're on the topic of receivers and building around Rodgers, before the start of the 2020 season, Rodgers claimed that receiver Jake Kumaro, who had been on the Packers practice squad since 2017, was a lock to make the team's final roster. You don't make repeat mental mistakes. And that is not who Jake Kumaro is. He is an extremely intelligent guy who's in the right place at the right time. He makes contested catches, he makes the plays that are there, and he does little things. What do you want to toe drag? Just little things like that that he does, I think almost innately, that separates him from a guy you might not trust as much because you know the guy's going to do it right, he's going to always be in the right spot, he knows what he's doing all the time and what the other guys are doing, and then when he gets a chance to make plays, he makes plays. And he does it in a super classy, understated way. So, uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of the fam. I don't think I need to keep going on that. A day later, the team cut Kumaro. The Packers, by the way, didn't trade for any receivers ahead of the deadline. They were linked to Houston, Texas standout Will Fuller V but a deal never materialized. Although it's probably a good thing seeing as how he was suspended for PEDs shortly after. Still, the point was that the Packers didn't keep Kumaro, whom Rodgers endorsed. And they didn't bother to add a receiver at the deadline when they were clearly ready for a deep playoff run. Following the reports of Rodgers' unhappiness with the Packers, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reported that number 12 wanted more say in the personnel decisions. He said the Packers' decision to cut Kumaro drove him nuts and Rappaport called it a death knell in their relationship. He helped them smoothly transition out of the glorious Brett Favre era. And what has Rodgers gotten in return? Nothing but disrespect and mismanagement on the front office's end. So, what's stopping Rodgers from going to a team that will build around him, feature him in roster personnel decisions, and actually not waste his prime? From the sound of it, he's had this planned out for quite some time. Following the aforementioned report from Bob McGinn, NFL Network's Mike Garofalo shared another juicy tidbit. What I'm told from multiple sources is that Aaron Rodgers was telling the Packers prospective free agents, basically, before you make any decision, I'm probably not going to be here, right? And to the point where he was telling them, I'm told, all the way back to the beginning of last season. Now, that was in the wake 
the months after the team had drafted Jordan Love. This is awfully similar to the Brady situation. The latter essentially orchestrated his departure from New England when he signed a contract extension in 2019 that was structured to be voided and allow him to enter the free agent market the following year. Like Brady with the Pats in 2019, Rodgers seemingly knew in 2020 that it would be his last dance with the Packers. Yet, he was still able to put the distractions aside and get the team to within a few plays of a Super Bowl appearance. We shouldn't forget that Rodgers made some interesting comments before the playoff loss to Tampa Bay. He wouldn't confirm his future with the organization, calling it a beautiful mystery. Normally, you don't make those comments before a playoff game, but it's as if Rodgers wanted to semi-hint to the Packers fans that he was gearing up for his final run with the storied franchise. And so, it seems like Rodgers' glorious roller coaster 16-year run at the Packers has slowly but surely met its conclusion. At this point, there is nothing Green Bay can do to make Rodgers happy other than trade him. A franchise icon has done everything in his power to help this team win a Super Bowl. There's nothing more he can do. Rodgers surely knows this, and it's why he's given the Packers no choice but to move on from this relationship. Who do you think Aaron Rodgers will end up getting traded to? Join us in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, click in the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.